Hello, um, just a quick video, I'm kind of a bit old school, this is on a, um, a Sony bloggy while the um, GoPro is away on its little RMA holiday. Um, so uh, this is uh, a Ryzen build um, and we're going to be looking at temps first and then we'll look at the individual parts and then if you want to um, build the same one obviously you can buy the same bits. So. Um, We'll also discuss some issues as well. So uh, it's on and it's idling at uh, about uh, 44 uh, with a maximum of 54. Um, processors cause uh, there was a bit of a, sp a bit of a spike when it um, when the software was loaded, but apart from that, it's on pretty much zero. So let's have a look at. Um, we'll set the burning going and then um, we'll have a look. I'm just going to have the um, stop thing ready just in case it gets a bit warm. It shouldn't do, but I always do that. So, um, yeah, anyway, so over here is the actual machine. I will move the camera in. And I think you can hear the noise on it. What's quite nice is the, um, this is the, RGB Wraith Prism cooler. It's the one that comes with the processor. So let's look at um, what parts we've got in this build. First thing obviously is we've got the um, Ryzen Ryzen 7. It's the um, 27, 2700X 8 core 16 thread um, with a 4.3 gigahertz max boost. That comes with the cooler. Uh, next thing is we've got 32 gigs of RAM, and it's it's. I don't know if you can see that the, the bloggy isn't that good at zooming in, but that's the um, that's the RAM. The RAM itself, it's the 32 gig, two sticks that's on the um, QVL list for this particular um, for this particular Ryzen processor. So it's on the list. Uh, and the motherboard is uh, the Prime X470 Pro. Um, okay, so it's all built. Uh, it's got a Samsung um, M.2 in it as well, but that's beside the point. Uh, and a wireless card because that's what they wanted. Uh, the graphics card is a GTX 1660 Ti. Um, and uh, Right, so issues. Right, motherboard first. Uh, what's really annoying about it is the the white cover, which you can see there. That has actually got a plastic film on it. So has that um, uh, heat sink there as well, which you can't see because my fingers out of view. But it's the one, it's the Southbridge one. Um, that um, that plastic cover is a real pain to remove because you have to loosen the heat sinks. Uh, next to it there's a heat sink there. You have to loosen that at the back to get it off because you have to unscrew it and lift that off to peel off all the plastic. So that's kind of annoying how that happens. Um, the back plate that you get with it, the IO shield that you get with it is is functional but um, considering this isn't the cheapest motherboard that Asus make it would have been nice to have it a bit more, you know, not plain silver because it's, it's, um, it's just plain aluminium. The inside of it, it's, it's padded which is fine um, yeah the case is an in win 303 there's an unboxing video for that the case is absolutely fantastic um, can't complain at that at all it's brilliant um, yeah so let's look at the um, cooler then well this is a um, the stock cooler that comes with it and it makes Intel look a bit silly what's well, kind of fun um, we're peaking at 73 degrees at the moment. What's kind of fun is um, the software that comes with it. Yeah, I think it's done by Razer, but it's got links to Cooler Master as well. But the software is really rather cool. Um, I've got it configured to be USB controlled rather than plugged into the RGB header on the motherboard. Um, but we'll just have a look at that software. Um, and there it is. Uh, it's, it's you download it and install it, but there's a separate setting for the ring, the fan, and the logo, uh, and you can go through a whole range of different options. What's kind of funky about the fan is that it's got a mirage effect, 
and that can be that, that's a bit oh that's a bit hypnotic because if you look at it you can see that the fan the leds are sort of pulsing in line with um to make the fan sort of strobe it's like a, a weird strobing effect so if i increase the red Increase the, increase the frequency you can see the sort of it's it's changing and you can get some quite nice effects obviously that only works for the fan speed that it's on um, but it's it's kind of cool but makes you feel a bit sick if you look at it so um, don't look at it but it's kind of nice that you can turn the, the fan LED off completely like that um, and I'll turn the light out we'll, we'll get a better view yeah, that's better. So the fan itself is really is I think it's brilliant. Um, so you can turn turn the individual parts of the light of it off. Just have the logo. You can just have the fan on its own without the logo. So you can turn it. There's three parts to it. There's the logo, the fan, and the ring. And you can each independently controlled. And you can also independently control what color they are as well. Which is which is um, rather fun. So um, yeah, the, the actual LED effects are are pretty funky. Really quite, I'm really quite liking that. So um, let's put them all on rainbow. Sort of color cycle like that, and it, 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 it the LEDs are quite soft. You can also adjust the speed and the brightness as well, and that's all done using the settings on there. So you've got um, brightness you've got um, the speed it's really quite funky um, yeah and it works with the razor chroma and you can sync it up to other things um, yeah that's great also for the motherboard has got um, the motherboard has also got some color software so if we go to um, that's done using armory crate which is the Asus proprietary software. It takes a, quite a while for it to download and configure itself. So long, in fact, that you think it's probably not worked, but it kind of has. So um, that's got Aura effects as well. So they're independently configurable. Um, in theory, if you plug the, the cooler into the RGB controller, uh, RGB header on the motherboard, in theory, you can use Aura Sync to um, synchronize everything at once in one go. Um, that's kind of cool. Um, I haven't bothered with that um, just because I haven't bothered. So um, yeah, so really liking the LEDs, but you know, and now in terms of cooling, let's see what's going on. So at the moment we're at 81 degrees, 100% um, load. Um, it's only, it's not doing the 4.3 gigahertz. It's about 3.8, 3.7. Um, but it looks like it's pretty stable, about 81. And this is using um, 3,200 uh, megahertz RAM, which has been um, just synced using the sort of AMD equivalent of XMP. And there was no changes to voltages have been made. No, no, there's been no fiddling. Just one setting has been changed, and it and it kind of works. So what we'll do is um, we'll look at that now where that was done and, and that's how you get a bit of extra performance without the faff that you normally get with Intel processors. So um, we're looking at 81 degrees with everything, uh, all, all 16 cores being used 100%. Um, so there it is there. It'll take, the camera will just adjust and you can probably see the numbers there. What I'll do is I'll reboot it. So we'll stop that. Um, it actually drops, the temperature drops fairly rapidly, which is kind of nice as well. So it's, it's good at recovering from um, heat. It's already down to, I don't think here, it's just lowered the, the speed of the fan because it's dropping down to 50 now. So it's on 50 now. So it cools down pretty quickly. But the fan is a bit noisy and there's quite a lot of vibration as well at high speeds. Um, but for a stock cooler, Intel take note. So let's restart this and have a look at what the setting was that was changed. And then we'll, um, we'll see what's going on. So I'll tap delete a bit. And we'll get into the BIOS. 
that strobing effect is a oh, you can't really see it and the bloggy isn't that good at picking up picking it up it's doing HD it's doing HD at 30 frames a second but it's like you know 10 year old HD so let's get the camera in the right place uh, so you should be able to see that um, I'll just put it back slightly so there's the full screen there so you go into advanced mode you can, well you, you can see there um, the memory speed is um, uh, DDR4 3200 megahertz uh, motherboard temperature is 32 degrees CPU temperature the motherboard you're putting out is 51 if I go into advanced mode and we go to AI tweaker there's AI overclock tuner um, you just select DOCP and then it automatically looks at the RAM picks the correct profile and loads all the settings for you so it's one you just change one thing that's all you do one thing brilliant uh, with Intel getting 3200 megahertz RAM to work um, requires all sorts of other tweaks like voltage tweaks to keep the CPU stable really quite annoying um, I don't think there's any other settings that are useful there is um, the lights do stay on um, at boot uh, so it would be n there, there's another video about how to turn that off um, that's the motherboard lights that is um, but you can see everything's working absolutely fine and even at full load it clocks in at uh, about 81 degrees so um, oh, okay the side panel is off so maybe we can add another 5 degrees I've only put the side panel off because um, it's this reflective and you can see the fan better. Um, but I'm really impressed by the um, the RGB Wraith prism. I think it's a great little cooler. Um, the clip's a bit old school. That takes you back to Sempron. But um, the actual uh, benchmark for this, the user benchmark for this is online. Um, there's a link in the description as well as a full list of all the parts that are in it. So if you wanted to copy this build and have a relatively trouble-free time um, then be my guest obviously if you've got any comments or any thoughts um, stick them in the comments uh, liking and subscribing is always appreciated uh, now I've got over 500 subscribers we're sort of on the push now to get a thousand that would be nice um, yeah so uh, any questions any comments stick them in the comments and uh, thanks for watching